Hi, my name is Marcus Ruiz Evans. I'd like to do another installment of the debate on California signed a pact with Oregon and Washington, and what does that mean? How far do you take that pact? How far do you not take it? What are the limits? Go all the way or don't? Recently, California expanded that pact from Oregon and Washington to include Nevada and Colorado. So I made a video saying, hey, keep the pack limited to just the West Coast, include British Columbia, don't include areas that don't share your politics or your economy or have a workable history of actually partnering with you. And then Governor Newsom expanded the pack to Nevada and Colorado. And so some people said, hey, that looks like the opposite of your advice. True. But a couple facts in part two of how big should the pact be and who should be involved in it. So, uh, on 426, we at Yes California talked about the Pacific Coast Collaborative, and we pointed out that there was a organization from 2008, reauthorized December 2019 by Gavin Newsom, and British Columbia, and the existing governors of Oregon and Washington, saying they were going to continue that pact. That's a huge track record of success. Those four governments coming together on climate change, they also dealt with uh, tsunami debris from Japan. They also dealt with an opioid crisis, and they have plans for a joint energy grid and joint transportation grid. So way beyond wherever climate was. British Columbia, Oregon, Washington, California. When we proposed that here at Yes California on April 26th, a lot of people said, love it. Now they had one condition, add Nevada. Uh, specifically, Avery Eckling, Bob Timlin, INZ, Robert Dennison, and Betty Navalis. All said, love the idea of Pacific Pack, but or, uh, Nevada should be in there. So, okay. Now we go to April 27th. And California announces that it is expanding the pact with Oregon and Washington to include uh, Oregon, Washington, and California to include Nevada and Colorado. Uh, right away, you have people, uh, Kyle Clark wrote a tweet about that. Um, Levi at One Good Thing said, don't California my Colorado. So here's a guy from Colorado saying, hey, Colorado is part of this pact with California. Immediately, someone comes up with a bumper sticker says, don't California my Colorado. I don't like that place. 20 people like that post. Uh, but he's not alone. Um, Cisco Kid, Cody Queen, Johnny United, Jason Williams, Mama Squama, and Brian Etherton all said on the uh, Twitter post by Kyle Clark about California bringing in Colorado, get the hell out of Colorado, California. So I said, Watch out for building a big, co big coalition and bringing in people who do not share your economy or your culture. Like these people in this tweet just said. I said that. Gavin Newsom brought in Colorado. That day, people from Colorado started acting like the exact same way I said watch out for. So uh, we'll have to see if that union with Colorado makes sense. Californians seem to, yes, California, say, include Nevada. We have strong linkages. They're right here. And they turn blue. A lot of Californians move to Nevada, specifically Las Vegas area, not the rest of it, uh, and uh, Reno. The entire rest of Nevada is not California land. Vegas and Reno are. That made sense to bring them in. Governor Newsom brought in Colorado. People in Colorado immediately started ta trash-talking California the day he did that. Fact. So, let's go to April 28th. Now, April 28th, Andrew Ward, Andrew Ward out of Seattle, wrote an article that was also printed in the Davis Enterprise. Now, this is key. The Davis Enterprise is the newspaper of a city right next to Sacramento. So here's this Seattle author. He writes an article. It just happens to be reprinted in Davis, which is a newspaper that everyone in Sacramento reads. Okay, Seattle person says something, newspaper in the capital of California picks up on it. Coincidence? Well, let's take a look. So, who is Andrew Ward? Well, he's a famous Civil War historian. He's written many books on the Civil War. He's an expert on the Civil War. He's done 
uh, interviews with the New York Times, the Atlantic Magazine, Washington Post, and National Public Radio on the Civil War. Uh, he's also written for Atlantic Magazine, which is an international magazine. So the guy is uh, well thought of, history on the Civil War, written for many magazines. And he said on April 28th, hey, there's this article by Tom Elias talking about California secession because of coronavirus. I, reading that article, remember when Governor Paul Schell, Seattle Governor, I mean, sorry, Seattle Mayor Paul Schell in the 90s, early thousands said, uh, Oregon, Washington, California, and British Columbia should secede and form their own country. So yes, Seattle Mayor said that, Paul Schell, uh, British Columbia, Oregon, Washington, California should secede. The exact same conglomeration as the Pacific Coast collaboration. Uh, Andrew Ward brings that up on April 28th and says, hey, remember when this guy said British Columbia, Oregon, and Washington, California should secede together? I'm just bringing that up. By the way, I'm a Civil War historian, and I write for The Atlantic, and I've been in <laughs> NPR, Washington Post, etc. And I'm just bringing up, this guy said, go ahead and secede. And in that article I, by Andrew Ward, April 28th, Davis Enterprise, he also says, well, there's this article by Tom Elias talking about California should secede. Now, here's the interesting thing. The Tom Elias article referenced by Andrew Ward talks about, yes, California. And it talks about me, Marcus Ruiz Evans, president of Yes, California. I made a video saying British Columbia, Oregon, Washington, California should secede together. So Andrew Ward writes an article referencing the Tom Elias article. The Tom Elias article talks about me. I talk about British Columbia, California, and Oregon, and Washington should secede. A few days ago. Then, very recently, a guy that is a Civil War historian and a respected author talk, uh, that's talked to many newspapers talks about the COVID-19 article with Time Alliance that mentions me and talks about BC, Oregon, and Washington, California should come together. Well, I made a video saying the exact same thing a few days ago. He just read the article by Tom Elias, saw me, never saw the video I made, and just happened to talk about the exact same thing within a 48-hour time period? Maybe. Probably not. Okay, moving on. So the point is, yes, I said British Columbia, Oregon, Washington, California. Yes, Governor Newsom seemed to move away from that. He brought in Nevada, Colorado. Good move on Nevada. A lot of Californians were saying that. I was wrong on that. Okay. But Colorado? I pointed out, you make this too big, you bring in people with different economies and different cultures, it ain't going to work. The day you did that, Coloradans talked trash on California. That proves my point. And then an expert on the Civil War said maybe British Columbia, Oregon, Washington, and California should be the way to go. And he did that very recently, right after I made my video, saying the same thing. So April 27th, here's the other thing that's going on. So Newsom uh, announced the pact with Oregon and Washington. Then he brought in Nevada and Colorado on the 27th of April. That same day, the Attorney General of California, remember the last Attorney General, uh, the Attorney General of America on that same day, William Barr, wrote a memo saying... The Constitution forbids, in certain circumstances, undue interference with the national economy. He and he is sending two attorneys general to begin to look at different states' reactions to uh, interfering with reopening the economy. He's pointing out the Constitution has the ability to stop people from undue interference with the national economy, economic system. He is sending two civil rights attorneys generals. Uh, from the federal government to address that overreach in federal court and, if necessary, take action to correct. So, Gavin Newsom says, hey, I'm having a pact with uh, multiple states on if the federal government wants to reopen uh, the economy, we're going to do our own thing and ignore it. 
That same day, the attorney general of the American government says, by the way, the Constitution says you can't do that, and I'm sending two attorney generals to go look into this. And if I don't like what you do, I'm going to have them sue you and take you to federal court for doing that. Newsom says I'm expanding my pact. The same day, the attorney general of America says, oh, yeah, not a coincidence. They're talking to each other. And I think what's going on is that Newsom is trying to win the battle before it's won. So California has sued the federal government multiple times throughout Brown and Newsom under the guidance of Attorney General uh, Professor X, um, uh, Javier Becerra. Now, Becerra's strategy for winning a lot of these lawsuits, or at least going into the lawsuits, was to bring as many American states on board with them. So they did this with climate change, sanctuary cities, you name it. So California has been countersuing the federal government in federal court with a lot of American states joining onto the lawsuit by California. I think that's what Newsom's doing. He knows the federal government's going to challenge this. And he's saying, okay, well, then I'm going to get the biggest collection of states and we'll see who you get on your side. Uh, with California's vehicle emission standards, they were able to get many states to side with California against the wishes of Donald Trump, a.k.a. against the wishes of America. So last year, California got states to say, hey, we're going to sign with California's policy on emissions, which is the opposite of what the federal government is saying. But we're going to choose them and not the feds. I think Newsom's doing that again. Yeah, I hope that's right, because I would like to bring something up. In 2008, the Pacific Coast Collaborative got formed to deal with climate change. It expanded into dealing with health emergencies like the tsunami from Japan, wreckage coming across the Pacifics, and drug overdoses. So it immediately expanded from climate change into other social issues and emergencies. And it was able to do that. It's had a successful track record. Now, I want to read a quote for you, though. This is from 2012. Recognizing that the Pacific Coast is an emerging West Coast mega region bound together by shared geography, infrastructure, and an outlook of the citizens. Recognizing the Pacific Coast is an emerging West Coast mega region bound together by geography, infrastructure, outlook. Governor Brown said that, along with the Premier of British Columbia and the current governors of Oregon and Washington. Were they wrong? They said a few years ago, hey, you know what makes us able to work together? We have a shared geography, a shared economy. We are already transportation linked to each other. And we have a roughly similar outlook on major issues. That's not Colorado. So is it a good idea for the California government to ignore the conclusions of the California government? California is making... Uh, quick decisions now in a panic. This statement came back in 2012. Everybody was cool. They were not panicked. There was no politics. They were just talking about what made the most logical sense in a, in a vacuum. And they said, British Columbia, Oregon, Washington, California, have an air corridor. Actually, it's two air corridors. But because of the Rocky Mountains, they're cut off. Because the Pacific comes against them, they can't stop that. So they all experience the pollution from the Pacific Ocean. And then it butts up against the Rockies and whatever pollution they cause from Vancouver down to California, uh, San Diego near there, um, is blocked by the Rockies. So they're cut off from being able to get pollution from America, but they can do nothing about the Pacific pollution. And they're trapped within this one air region. They said that. That's why they made the uh, Pacific Coast Collaborative in 2008. Because if you're worried about air particulates, you need to have control of the air. So they said the best way to have control of the air is Vancouver to Portland and all of California. Because those are two air corridors that basically make one. They also said we're already transportation linked and it's really hard to get across the Rockies. And because the population of America is so far over here, there's less flights and less trains. But there's more trains and flights and people traveling back and forth here because we're connected and the air corridor is connected. Well, here we are in an emergency where they're talking about we have to stop people coming in to our area on trains, planes, cars on the road, and airports. The federal government has the authority over airlines, um, railroads, 
uh, the highway system. It's called the National Highway System and and seaports. And so they could open up the transportation grid into California. We have to stand against that. Well, if you're actually worried about controlling the entire transportation grid so that people can't sneak into your system and then once in the corridor easily travel back and forth spreading the disease of coronavirus, and if you're actually worried about coronavirus particulates not getting into the air, then you must follow the guidance you did in 2008 and re- Published in 2012, it said British Columbia, Oregon, Washington, California are connected. Transportation, infrastructure, politics, air corridor. Why are you moving away from that now? Geography suddenly changed. Infrastructure was radically redirected from our region across the Rockies over the last, what, uh, six, eight years? No, that never happened. So what's the reason? If it was good enough back then, maybe it's still good enough now. And there's going to be a map attached to this video, and I want to point something out. Tijuana to Ensenada is part of the air corridor with California. And we have a lot of transportation linkages, infrastructure. And we have a similar outlook, uh, Latinos, Latinos in Southern California. And there's a lot of people coming across the border through tunnels, through cars. It's already linked. So if you're really concerned about controlling people from getting into our transportation network that's easily connected up and north, and you're really concerned about particulates getting into the air that's one corridor, then you must seal off Vancouver all the way down to Ensenada. I'm going to publish a map. You can see what I'm talking about. Or we're doing a half-assed job, and we're ignoring the logic of the British Columbian, Oregon, Washington, and California governments just a few years ago.